Recently, there's been a great deal of interest in identifying better imaging strategies to inform on the optimal manage management of patients with advancing prostate cancer. However, until recently, modern imaging has tended to focus on diagnostic performance, often blurring the line between different clinical states or scenarios. And we need better evidence of the pathway and survival impacts of next generation imaging, as pointed out by these two recent publications. Essentially, these publications are saying that any introduction of next generation imaging should better predict, better prognosticate, or enhance treatment decisions in order to maximize treatment benefits, minimize undertreatments, reduce or prevent overtreatments, while tempering costs and toxicities. They also point out that there's been incomplete management impacts of next generation imaging, and we are already beginning to see patients who are being subject to treatment intensifications that may not improve outcomes, but may, can increase morbidity, toxicity, and cost. And on the opposite side, we are also beginning to see withholding of potentially beneficial therapies in order to spare toxicity. But this could lead to under-treatments, uh, increased mortality and morbidity, which we need to be careful about. And we need studies that take advantage of next-generation imaging benefits while minimizing the biases of next-generation imaging. So what are the next-generation imaging advantages and what are the biases? Well, the advantages are improved lesion characterizations. What is this lesion? Improved lesion detection sensitivity. So at staging, this is micro metastatic disease, and at therapy monitoring, this is microprogressive disease. But it also improves bone response categorizations. But all of these come with survival time biases. We need to think about three major biases stage migration and the Will Rogers effect is number one, lead time bias, and length time bias. So let's take each of these in turn. So what is stage migration? We know that next generation imaging is better than bone scans and CT scans in sensitivity and specificity. The improved sensitivity means that patients will be at a higher stage than you thought the patient might be on conventional imaging. So on conventional imaging, if you think that somebody with locally advanced prostate cancer has no metastatic disease, they could have oligometastatic disease. If you think they've got oligometastatic disease, they could have polymetastatic disease. So you can see that the higher sensitivity causes stage inflation, the higher specificity causes stage deflation. Now this can lead to something called the Will Rogers effect. If you take conventional imaging, you divide patients into metastatic and non-metastatic disease, and you can see the treatment survival benefits on the right-hand side. If you use next-generation imaging, some patients are reclassified. In fact, bidirectional reclassifications occur. Because of increased sensitivity, these patients here with indolent disease or microscopic metastatic disease get reclassified into the metastatic group. Because of increased specificity, this false positive patient gets reclassified into the no disease group. So you can see how next generation imaging is increasing the prevalence of higher stage patients. Now, if you treat with the same treatment, in fact, what you find is both groups have improved survival. Why is that? Partly because in the M0 group, there are fewer diseased individuals. However, the M1 group also improves in survival because there is a dilution effect. There's a dilution effect because you've now included indolent disease and microscopic metastatic disease in the metastatic group. However, you also have to remember that the survival of the 
metastatic group is also improved because of lead time bias and length time bias. The increased detection and the earlier treatment of microscopic metastatic disease is what causes lead time bias. The overdiagnosis and the overtreatment of indolent disease causes length time bias. Let's discuss these in turn. So length time bias. This is an overestimation of survival duration because of the greater detection and the greater treatment of disease that is likely to progress slowly. So if you keep on de de detecting disease that is unlikely or less likely to cause harm in the shorter term, these patients then accumulate. If they accumulate and the, that group increases, so the overall group seems to have an increase in survival. This is length time bias. Lead time bias is slightly different. Lead time bias is an overestimation of survival duration because of an earlier detection of metastatic disease. Let me just illustrate. So we talked about stage inflation being caused by improved disease detection sensitivity. If, at, if on conventional imaging we detect disease at a particular time point and then that's when we initiate treatment, you'll see that the patient passes away at this time. By using next generation imaging, you get earlier disease detection. So you detect at this point. If you give the same treatment and the patient survives just as long, then the apparent improvement in survival is just lead time bias because this is just the earlier detection of metastatic disease. Now lead time bias also comes into the paradigm of response assessments. Remember that for bone disease, currently we divide patients into progression and non-progression categories using bone scans and CT scans. Now, with next generation imaging, what we can do is we can split this apart. We can have patients, we can have positively identify patients who are responding, those who are stable, and those patients who are progressive. And within the progression category, we can also divide those people who are having micro progression and larger volumes of progression. And the ability to detect micro progression at an earlier time point can also lead to lead time bias. So, for example, if you have conventional imaging, and this is when you start the first treatment, and on conventional imaging, that's when you detect the progression, and then you switch therapy and the patient survives this long. If on next generation imaging, you detect micro progression at an earlier time point, and you use the same therapy, and the patient survives just as long, then you've got lead time bias. Now, if you can take advantage of the fact that you can see micro progression at an earlier time point, and then intervene with an, an a more appropriate therapy, then you can improve survival because you have just reset the clock. By resetting the clock, then instituting the therapy that you were going to institute, the patient will survive longer. So this is called lead time bias. So just to conclude, next generation imaging introduces survival biases because of the earlier detection of both important and unimportant disease. Stage migration bias is improved survivals due to the reclassification of microscopic metastatic disease and indolent disease into a higher disease state. Lead time bias is overestimation of a survival duration due to the earlier detection and the earlier treatment of microscopic metastatic disease or microscopic progressive disease. Finally, length time bias is overestimation of survival duration due to the overdiagnosis and overtreatment of indolent disease. Thank you very much.